Where do you get it from? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Should, I was just talking to her. All right. It is uh, 7.02. So <laughs> it's 7 o'clock or 7.02 exactly. So I'm going to call the meeting to order. This is the uh, City Council meeting from Minatrista, January 8th, 2024. And first order of business is, oops, I want to remind everybody, including myself, to turn your cell phones on silent um, so they don't disrupt the meeting. And then second, would you please join me in Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So thank you and welcome everybody that's here this evening as well as later on watching on YouTube. So first order, I'd like to uh, make introductions. I'm Lisa Whalen, I'm the mayor. And to my left are council members, Kathleen Refkin, Ann McGregor, Peter Vickery, Claudia Lacey. And then we also have staff this evening here present. We have our director of public works, Gary Peters. Ali Palfus is our um, director of administration. And then behind her, we have our city clerk, Ann Meyerhoff. And then to my right are Jasper Krupp, Krugel, who is our city administrator, Brian Grimm, our finance director, and then sitting in for our attorney, um, Sarah Sansala, this evening is Joshua Weir, and uh, welcome. And then next to him is, um, last but certainly not least, our police chief, Paul Falls. <coughs> so uh, with that, we have an agenda in front of us. Are there any changes to the agenda, any additions? Um, if not, is there a motion to approve the agenda as presented? So moved. Thank you, Ms. Refkin. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Ms. Clou uh, Lacey. <laughs> I just want to call you Claudia, Ms. Claudia. Um, it sounds so cute. Good. Anyhow, um, thank you. That was uh, seconded by Ms. Lacey. All those in favor signify with aye. 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 All those opposed, motion passes 5-0. Next, uh, we don't have any special presentations. And this evening, we have one member in our audience. We have Margaret Davis here with us this evening that wish you would like to address the council. Ms. Davis, you'll have to come to the podium, state your name and address for the record, and for um, per, under persons to be heard, as you know, um, we, uh, we don't take any action on any requests this evening. So please feel free to come forward. <laughs> nice to be here and see all of you. And, uh, as we all know, as all of you know, I was on the city council for eight years and enjoyed it most of the time. Not all of the time. I was going to poke you in a joke, but I don't have one. <laughs> but uh, I, I could say that maybe the weather is a joke. So, um, I have a, a, a special request. I didn't prepare anything specific for tonight, knowing full well that no uh, proceedings are prepared. <coughs> I have been to the uh, city council many times to talk with uh, the things I would like to do with my property. I have a unusual experience in my life, or maybe not so unusual, but um, on a personal level, $2 million in my retirement account was absconded. I have not been aware of this argument, and uh, it will take a long time to get it out that way. But that's what brings the issue, which I never thought I'd really be in. Something with my life. We all have to do something with our lives. But mine involves a financial decision. I've lived at my uh, uh, house, ranch, since 1984. We bought it, built it, developed it, had success in my community and in my personal life. I had decided to stay in the house. And there's one of the ways I can do it is by a uh, division of uh, my 40 acres. 
the forty acres I have is uh, really had enough to do with thirty seven acres. And I have a very good uh, friend who purchased some land next to me who I think is pick up <coughs> three acres from him. And uh, everybody today uh, feels the same difficulty financially financially. I'm not the only one. The United States of America is under despair in many different areas. My background in education, I'm a history major and an economic minor. I've uh, owned six companies, five from the United Ways, etc. I never thought in my wildest dreams that I would be in this position. Turns out, as we all are, take you where you want it. I like to stay in the house. And to do that, it involves a, uh, if I could do a division, uh, a split, like 20 acres, So, Ms. Davis, I do understand or I believe that uh, you are on the agenda, if I'm not mistaken, for the Planning Commission coming up the end of January. Is that correct, Ms. C Mr. C that is correct, on the 29th. On the 29th. So, um, and then, so it'll go in front of the Planning Commission. The Planning Commission will hear your, your um, case, if you will, and then it will come back to the Council, and the Council will then also have another opportunity and you would have another opportunity to address us at that time. We're not going to make any decision here tonight um, and um, you would have a little more time um, after, the count, after the planning commission meeting as well. So you'd have two more opportunities to address oh, the council. Great. Yeah. I uh, so. brought this tonight. Okay. If you want to hand that to the chief and then he can um, make copies or pass it on to the Um, we have a, we oh, have, I believe okay. that's the same thing you have in your application, it's correct? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And that'll be going to the planning commission as well as to the, to the council afterwards as well. So. Well, okay. But for some of you, you haven't seen it. Um, I can't but Ms. Davis, I have to, I'm going to have to stop you tonight because under persons to be heard, we do have a limit of three minutes and well, I've given you more than that. It's a meeting here tonight. I know, I know it is, but, um, because you're going to have another opportunity. In fact, you're going to have two more opportunities to um, show us what you want to do and to tell us about your story. So we're not, we're not um, stopping you from doing that. You're going to go through the process. We're going to hear you again at the Planning Commission and again at the Council meeting um, after that. So I think it'll come to the Council meeting um, on February 5th, I believe. If it goes to, or maybe it, it'll be. It'll likely be the 21st. The 21st. So you're oh, going to go to the, of February. So you're going to go to the Planning Commission on the 29th. Then it's going to come back to the council on um, February 21st. Or 20. Sorry, 21st. 21st. To the 29th of January. To the Planning Commission. Right. Yes. And then um, the 21st comes back here to the council. And I'll give you more than three minutes at that time. Thank you, Lisa. Okay. All right. <laughs> And we, did you state your, uh, I'm sorry, did you state your address for the record? I wrote it in, but I'll state it. 24, uh, 90 Parker Street Drive, County Road 26. Okay. Um, I just wanted to say one more minute of stuff. Okay, one more minute. <coughs> Okay, we can, that's, <laughs> thank, thank you. <laughs> cute, okay. Yeah. yeah, thank you, those are cute, very cute. Okay, yeah. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Thank you, Margaret. Thank you. Oh, okay, all right, well, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Margaret. Thanks, Margaret. All right. I'm so glad I didn't prepare a joke. <laughs> <laughs>
Maybe next time, okay? Next time. Okay. All right, thank you. All right. Next, we're going to move on to consent agenda items. I would like to pull a couple, um, number D and E. Is there any others? <coughs> yeah, I want to pull E. Oh, um, okay, I'm sorry. E, I wanted to pull um, H. You want to pull H? Yeah, okay. H I, as well. I want to pull E. Okay, so D, E, and H will pull. Any other ones? All right. With that, um, the consent agenda items in, um, include then, number A, approve our work session meeting minutes from December 4th, 2023. Approve city council regular meeting minutes from December 4th, 2023. C is approve our pay equity implementation report. F is approve our MOU with Local 49, revising probationary language and earn sick and safe time. And G is a resolution approving claims. Is there a motion to approve consent agenda items A, B, C, F, and G? So moved. Thank you, Ms. Lacey. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. P Vickery. All those in favor, signify with aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion passes 4 0. So I'm going to take the, um, the only reason I pulled the, approved the letter of resignation from our police sergeant, Josh Thompson. I, I just wanted to say publicly, I'm sorry to see him go. Um, he's been a great asset to our police department. And um, if he were still here, I know officially his last day is the, the four, um, 15th, I believe, or 14th, but he's taking some vacation time. If he were still here working, I would definitely uh, want to recognize him and say thank you for his years of service to our community. Um, like I said, he's been a great asset um, to our police department. He will be greatly missed. I do um, wish him the best of luck, and, and in the future, I know this is a great opportunity for him um, going over to the um, Hennepin County Sheriff's Office. So the best of luck to him. If you want to pass that on to him, if you should talk to him, greatly appreciate it. So unfortunately, we do still have to approve his letter of resignation. Um, is there a motion to approve his letter of resignation? Thank you, Mr. Vickery. Is there a second? Thank you, Ms. Refkin. All those in favor signify with aye. 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 All those opposed, motion passes. Next, approve our city council appointments and designations. Yes, I, um, I would like to pull that. Um, I have um, uh, enjoyed my time at, at the Gillespie Center, and it's been very rewarding. Um, but I am looking to uh, pass that on, um, possibly to Claudia. And... Um, and so that would require a change on that agenda. Thank you. Well, I would like to say thank you for doing that, for being the representative to the Gillespie Center. I will say you've done an excellent job, Anne. I, I have really appreciated everything that you've done. You've been there. You've done an excellent job and um, fully support you in all of your decisions and representation of the of this city. Thank you very, very much. Um, Claudia will have some big shoes to Phil, if you are willing to do that. Um, with that, could I also make one other minor thing? Claudia, would it would you be in favor of maybe handing over the WCC um, to Jasper and I? We can kind of tag team, or you and I could tag team. I know you can't always make it because of your business and your other commitments. If you'd like to tag team, maybe we could um, designate both of us. I would love to tag team. I speak with Betsy a lot. Right. Um, Okay. As well, and plus I run a business in right. that community, so yes, it's important to me. And I'm also across the street from the Gillespie Center, and I'm over there quite a bit. So I don't think it's that difficult. The only time I have a little bit of a problem is the first week of the month. But uh, you know, I think yeah. Can, okay. So then we'll just make those two minor changes, um, Claudia and myself for the Gillespie uh, for the uh, WCC, and then we'll change Claudia to the um, Gillespie Center. Okay. Any other other than that? I think we're good to go. So, is there a motion then to approve the um, designation for the appointments for 2024 with those changes? So moved. Thank you, Ms. McGregor. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Ms. Rathkin. All those in favor, signify with aye. 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 All those opposed. Motion 
passes. So next, um, the, the other reason, so next I pulled this polling place change real quick, a couple of things. One, um, in our packet, it lists the um, Minnetrista Baptist Church located in St. Bonnie. I want to just make it, clarify this. It is actually in Minnetrista. Of course, many, as you know, Minnetrista doesn't have any um, zip code. We use zip codes from surrounding communities. In fact, we have five different zip codes in our community. So it's confusing at times because it may say um, St. Bonnie zip code, but it's physically in Minnetrista. <coughs> the other reason I wanted to point this out is just so it's on record and so the public, if, if they're watching, we, this is a new polling place. We were at the Freshwater Church in St. Bonnie, which is confusing. But now it's going to be at the Minnetrista Baptist Church, which is in Minnetrista. And um, it's, right, it's right on basically Halstead. Um, Highland. Highland. Basically Highland. in Highland. So <laughs> thank you. Um, so in our packet, it said St. Bonnie. I just thought we should change that to Minnetrista and just making it known that we will have this as our new uh, one of our precincts in Minnetrista. So any other questions? Allie, do you need to add anything? No, communication oh. will be sent to the residents within the precinct. So. Good. Yeah. OK. So with that, um, I'll make a motion to approve the new polling place, um, adding the Minnetrista Baptist Church in Minnetrista as our new polling place instead of the Freshwater Church. Is there a second? So Thank you, Ms. Refkin. All those in favor signify with aye. 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 All those opposed, motion passes 5-0. So next uh, we move on to our business items, and that's a consider approval, <coughs> consider uh, the approval of LELS 473 Labor Union Agreement. Thank you, Madam Mayor, members of City Council. Um, this is our last labor agreement uh, that we had to renew. Um, uh, in 2023 that expired at the end of 2023. Um, so I'll give a little background um, about this. This is our CSO group. Um, we had a series of meetings throughout the year kind of leading up to um, what was a mediation event. So I think it was the first time we've had mediation uh, here in quite some time. Um, I'm not sure when the last time was. It's been a while. It's back. been a while. So, um, so it was a good exercise. You know, I've been I've been through it um, one other time uh, in another situation. But so basically, what we our offer that we made to the group um, was rejected, and we weren't able to come to terms. That's why we did mediation. So, um, the mediation event I think it was took about five hours or so uh, to to get it done. And just the mediation, just to make it clear, it's um, I forget the name of the group, but Bureau of Mediation Services in Minnesota. It's free. Um, it just takes our time, you know, everybody else's time. If we have legal counsel involved, their time, that type of thing. Um, but we were able to come to terms um, very, very close to what we originally offered. So um, the, the contract, the changes, just in summary, uh, this is a three-year contract. Uh, the previous one was a two-year. We did that to match up with the um, current LELS contracts that we have with the supervisors and the peace officers. Um, the other uh, next thing was Article 12. Um, we've increased that family contribution for health insurance, the cafeteria or the cafeteria plan, um, from 1,300 to 1,500. We've done that for all employees, including the unions too, for 2024. Um, and there's an re insurance reopener in there for 2025 and 2026. That's just in there. If we make any changes for non-union people, then it just automatically reopens. You've seen MOUs for that um, in the past. Uh, we have the Article 13 reflects a total of 525 dollars or 175 dollars per year for like uh, uniform allowance um, that matches up with what the increase was for um, the other groups that we have um, article 17 included the addition of juneteenth which is now a state uh, holiday so we've included that in all the contracts and the article 20 was really the the basis for the mediation so um, you can see on here uh, we have a we have what was approved um, that we tentatively agreed on per agreement by city council was a 14 and a half percent increase in 2024, three percent in 2025, and a two percent in 2026. So if you add all that up, you're at 19 and a half percent over the three years. Our initial offer was at 19 percent. So um, it's a little bit more front loaded than what we had originally, but um, you know it, it. So it costs a little bit more, but it's pretty dang close at the end of the contract where we're at. So um, 
that whole exercise, additional half percent um, is what the, the outcome was. So what we're recommending, um, and, and personnel committee um, is aware of this, and they're recommending this too, they're here, but um, is to approve this contract for the three-year term and uh, as the, with, with, the, with the changes that are summarized here. There's a red line version and a clean version of the, of the agreement too, if there's any other questions. I'll entertain them. How much does it impact the budget for the just passed? Is that the... it, it won't. So this is a very, very small part. It's two people. Um, oh. So it's only two people. Um, so very, very minimal yeah. impact. It's yeah, pretty, pretty immaterial. I don't want to make light of it, but it's, it's not a major impact. Yeah. Budget. In the overall in grand, grand scheme, scheme of things. Yeah. 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 Okay. okay. So, um, do I have a motion then to approve? So moved. Thank you. The <laughs> LELS 473 Labor Union Agreement. I know you were coming out with that, so okay. Um, is there a second? Second. Thank you, Ms. Lacey. All those in favor signify with aye. 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 All those opposed, motion passes. And then next, approve the MOU with LELS 116, 343, and 473 regarding the earned sick and safe time. Yes, um, thank you, Madam Mayor, members of City Council. Uh, before you are three memos of understanding, one for each of the groups, they're very similar. Um, the intent is to implement this ESST, this earned sick and safe time policy um, that we're required to implement. Um, each group, so we have a non-union group, we have our public works group, and we have our LELS group. And unfortunately, every one of them has a little bit different ESST policy because they're all kind of different. The non-union, we have um, PTO, um, the um, LELS has vacation sick and public works has vacation sick. So um, we've had, we had a lot of back and forth between the LELS group and, and the city about the way they wanted it implemented. We worked with them. Um, it is an employer right to implement it how we feel, but um, to circumvent an additional mediation event, potentially uh, we, we worked with them. And um, the group, I would say, kind of compromised a little bit too, because we, we weren't thinking of the way that they're we're implementing it. It wasn't one of the defined three ways um, that we would implement. So in summary, what's going to happen if this is approved is um, existing sick bank, uh, there, a certain portion, 80 hours, will be designated as ESST time on January 1st of 2024. They'll be able to use it for the ESST purposes outlined by the Department of Labor and Industry. It's, four, it's how many? You said 80 hours? It's, mm -hmm. it's 80 hours. Okay. Okay. It's 80 hours. Okay. Um, and, we, and I can get into the reason why we did that. We could do 48, but we did 80 um, because the max is 80. And if we had to track the 48 and the usage and then the year-to-year -year balance tracking, um, it, it's it, uh, somewhat of a limitation of our payroll software to be able to do that. It'd be a lot of manual tracking. Um, we really worked with Allie and, and Brian and Angie in payroll to make sure, you know, we didn't want to have this policy create a bunch of work for our staff too. So. Um, so what it is, is they're designating 80 hours of their current sick bank as ESST. If an employee, let's say they're new or newer, they're going to still designate 80 hours of the sick, but the sick might, sick bank might actually go negative, which they'll then earn that back. Um, they can't use their sick if it's negative, so they'd have to use ESST and we'll manage that year to year. Um, it's a little bit easier that way. So somewhat contentious a little bit between the groups, but I think we were able to make, work through it. Um, this is actually, I think internally we're like, well, if we would have, if, if we would have thought the, the staff would have been okay with designating sick time for ES, ESST, you know, that was a little kind of hybrid option that isn't technically outlined as okay, but if the employee's okay with it, then it's fine. So that's what's in front of you in a nutshell um, to be able to implement this thing that we kind of already have a policy for, but we're forced to to do it. So um, I'll entertain any questions. Allie had a big part in this as well. Um, you know, we, we brought in our legal counsel quite a bit with this too um, regarding the site issue. So I guess the one probably over or just main clarification I would make is that all it's just reclassifying parts of existing banks, whether it's mm -hmm. vacation, sick, or PTO. This is an additional benefit. It, it's for not anybody. additional. So, right. so right. whether they're choosing it's three different ways mm -hmm. it's being split, but it's just reallocating from current buckets to this state mandated earned safe and safe and sick time, which mm -hmm. basically was more targeted at places I think that weren't offering their employees 
Yeah. Right. Or, it's yeah, it's sick, or yeah. sick time, you know, it's time mm-hmm. away for mm-hmm. various reasons. So. That's a good point. I didn't, I didn't mention this. It's in the memo, but they, no more, no more time. It's no additional time. The 960 hours um, that yes. the max is, that's capped. That's still there. It's just 880 hours is sick. 80 hours is ESFP. Mm-hmm. So it's no different as far as the mm-hmm. benefit goes. Vacation sick. However, it's being implemented. Yeah. There's no additional. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Severance no. is the same. Severance is the same. <coughs> it's the same. It's just the way it's kind of packaged. Mm-hmm. And I will note, I did ask Jasper if the legislature makes changes up to the policy, it's easy to go back to how it was. <laughs> well, well, so we think. <laughs> yes. Correct. System-wise. But, yeah, it was easy yeah, to go back. Yeah, yeah. yeah. system-wise. Right. Right. It's what we're hoping for. <laughs> right. Right. So if you're okay with that, any other questions? All right. So if you're okay with that, then is there a motion to approve the MOU with LELS 116-343-473 regarding the earned sick and safe time? So moved. Thank you, Ms. Refkin. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Ms. McGregor. Further questions? Hearing none, all those in favor signify with aye. 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 All those opposed, motion passes 5-0. That concludes our business items, so we'll move on to our administrative items, staff. I, I do have one, um, and this is very recent. We have settled in on a strategic planning date of the 22nd, February 22nd at 1230 p.m. Um, so I think that'll work out. I think everybody will be able to be in attendance. Yes. Uh, mm-hmm. So um, we'll schedule a three-hour session. Um, a, working on uh, the survey for the topics. If you could fill that out and get that back to me, then we'll develop an agenda and we'll go from there. And I think we should be able to get it all in in three hours. If we need to <coughs> schedule another session, we will. So that kind of will um, provide the, the framework for what we work on for the next couple of years, so. Okay. okay, February 22nd, 1230 p.m. here? In the council chambers, correct. Okay, all right. Um, and then um, work session for Next meeting, do we want to uh, maybe post or cancel that? Yep, I think we're going to, we don't have any items on there. I think we're going to um, cancel that. We'll still have our regular meeting starting at 7. At 7 o'clock. So, yep. and Ellie, I'm assuming, or, or Ann, you'll post that then, yep. that it's been canceled. Okay. Yes. Anything else? The only other thing I have is the Senate bonding tour. Um, we have a presentation on the 17th that we're going to be presenting, similar to the one for the House. So we'll hopefully get the House, we'll get the Senate, and we'll get the governor to all dedicate us, mm-hmm. dedicate some funds to Minatrista. So right. we'll see um, what happens. The legislative session that really got a key, key in on, it'll likely be around April and May, uh, where we'll find out. Yeah, we won't find out sooner. Um, okay, I'll start off with um, council reports. So um, just uh, FYI, maybe we could add this to the next meeting, is the uh, GFOA award that we received. Yes. I got an email today that we received that again, and that's the um, award for um, yeah. accounting and financial. financial reporting, yeah, right. basically a comprehensive annual financial report. Yeah, right, so, so congratulations to you yeah. and your, yeah. your team. But um, I'd like to just add it under special presentation oh, yeah. if you that's would. That's what I was going to say. We at least got to have a council meeting in yeah. a couple weeks or just the regular meeting because mm-hmm. we don't get an award. Well, once a year, we get an award. We get an award. <laughs> I know. So, <laughs> so we'll add that. And then um, so the meetings that I've been to and some of the things. Uh, so we did have a post-holiday tree lighting a meeting. They kind of went over the, the little glitches that we had, which were <laughs> actually kind of funny, but anyhow. Um, and certain things, and if you have any ideas uh, of things that you'd like to see or any ideas, please give those to Allie or Jasper. If we can make it even better than this year, that would be great. As you know, we're, it's December 5th this year, I think, so keep that in, in mind. Uh, and then I also attended on uh, December 11th, I re- attended the roundtable discussion with Representative Myers that was hosted at the uh, City Hall in um, Let's see, Minnetonka Beach and Jasper attended as well. Most of that um, discussion uh, rotated around or was around the um, Highway 7 Corridor Coalition. There was the brand new representative for this district from MnDOT, which was good to have him there. Um, but and so he's aware of the coalition. He said he'd uh, likely and be very willing to participate. So there's certain low-hanging fruit items that we'd like to see done immediately or sooner than later. And he was very much in favor of that, rather than some kind of very huge project that would take years and years to develop. 
and I think we're all on the same page. We really want some of the safety issues addressed on Highway 7. So we'll be moving forward with that. Uh, the next meeting, the coalition meeting, we'll pro we don't have a date set, but it'll probably be end of February, uh, end of January, sometime in February as well. I also attended the Northwest League. Um, that was on December 13th, and again, Jasper joined me for that. It was a special meeting with mayors and administrators from different cities. We had an um, opportunity to meet some of the very, very new administrators, some just hours um, into their <laughs> into their new position, um, have others uh, one other one just a couple of, of weeks. So it was good to meet all of them. A good networking opportunity, and then also um, both Jasper and I attended the West Tonka Rotary lunch um, at the Lafayette Club. Again, um, a good opportunity to meet different people in the community as well as be a participant of the greater community and supportive of them. And then coming up, um, as Jasper mentioned, we have that. Um, uh, Senate bonding tour, I will be uh, uh, attending that and memorizing a speech, I think. Um, and then, and then uh, tomorrow I'll be attending the Park Commission meeting, and then um, also the next uh, Northwest League is this week, and that, that discussion is going to be around the Met Council transportation, so I'll bring back some information regarding that, and then I'll also be attending the Planning Commission meeting on the 29th of January, so that's all I have. Any questions? All right. With that, any other reports? No. All right. I know it's I been. Have one. Yes. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, I met with Betsy Brady. I went and I attended the holiday party for the West Tonka um, Community and Commerce Organization at um, LNL. It was very lovely. And what they're focused. They had a meeting today where um, they discussed their big fundraiser for the Special Olympics, the Polar Plunge. Mm -hmm. It's at the end of this month. Surfside Beach. Um, they're meeting uh, prior to the plunge at um, Surfside Grill, I guess at about 11.45 to gear up. Um, their goal is to raise $65,000. They've already raised about 11000 but it's coming up, so you know, sponsor someone if you can. Um, and again, it's for the Special Olympics. Uh, what else do they want to tell you about that? Oh, they have a speaker coming at their next meeting on the 21st, I believe. No, I'm sorry, it is not the 21st. It's, uh, I'll have to double check them. Someone is coming to, it's the, um, I'm so sorry. Sorry, I'm so sorry. Oh, distinguished speaker. He is with the Minnesota Small Business Community or something like that. And so he's talking about um, tax laws that are going to be a ch changing in 2024 that will affect small businesses, and that will be at the Country Center. So if you want more information on that, let me know, and that's really all I have. Thank Good. You. Thank you. All right. So um, that concludes our meeting and reports. So is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Thank you, Ms. Refkin. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Ms. McGregor. All those in favor signify with aye. 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 All those opposed, motion passes. We are adjourned. I think that was a record. Very good. 7.35. <laughs> <laughs>